as you could imagine, if you tried to place a tiny needle of 27 gauge or 24 to 27 gauge through all of these ligaments that we just talked about, you can imagine how a tiny 27 gauge needle, 25 gauge needle, whatever, will really have a tough time passing through all of these ligaments. And what really happens is that that needle will start to bend. And as the needle bends because it does not have a support, it is almost impossible to guide the needle through the bony orifices to get to the intrathecal space. In addition, the needles that I use in modern practice are actually blunt tipped needles. So that makes it even more difficult to advance through all of these ligaments. And this is why every time we do a spinal injection, you always combine a tiny spinal needle with an introducer. Introducer is a larger gauge needle that allows a tiny needle to be placed through it and supports the tiny spinal needle on its way towards the intrathecal space. So in other words, you always want to place that introducer before placing the spinal needle. And then that introducer gives the support to the spinal needle so you can easily get into the cerebral spinal fluid. Here's one common mistake that I always see in a clinical practice. As the operator is placing an introducer, the operator places an introducer very shallow. Introducers are typically three centimeters or so in size, but the depth to the intrathecal space is about five or six centimeters. And out of a fear that the introducer, which is a larger gauge needle, will get into the intrathecal space and cause potential postural puncture headache, forces people out of fear to place the introducers very shallow. This is a very common mistake because the shallow placement of the introducer fails to give support to the spinal needle in its path towards the intrathecal space. Make sure you subscribe to Nysora YouTube channel and never miss the beat.